let's have a look at the different types of activities we may encounter. In the previous session, we were estimating the duration of the activities, but we have to understand a little bit more about the different types of activities that we can encounter. There are two main types of activities. The first type are the resource-driven activities, and the second type are the fixed duration activities. Let's have a look at resource-driven activities. The effort is determined, like we described in the previous session, with the same techniques. We also saw that we could estimate a project effort when we count in the experience of the human resources or the people that we allocate to these activities. The same with the capacity of material resources like processors and calculation speed. Those also will influence the activity duration. Adding resources will reduce the duration of the activity. But be careful. This is not unlimited. And once we add a certain amount of people, we will see also that the reduction of the, the duration of the activity is not linear anymore. Following the resource-driven activities and the addition of resources, we also will identify the concept of crash point. We will look at that in detail in the next session. The second type of activities are the fixed duration activities. The duration of these activities does not depend on the number of resources that have been allocated to the activity. Adding more resources will not reduce the duration of these activities. Some examples are the curing of concrete, typically takes 28 days or it takes 28 days before concrete reaches its calculated strength. The same for paint, it takes 24 hours to dry before you can apply the second layer. Of course, environmental conditions can influence the duration. And in some cases, special techniques may help, like adding a drying aid to concrete or to paint. So, now we understand the different types of activities, and now we have to apply those in the next sessions. Keep up the good work. See you there.